On the third day of sleep training, a study found infants stopped crying. But do you want to know what else they found? That the baby's cortisol levels, do you know what cortisol is? Your stress hormone, were just as high after a night of sleep they didn't cry than before while they were crying. This quite literally proves, while every child is going to be different, that babies who are sleep trained stop crying because they know no one's coming for them. By day three, the baby stopped crying, but cortisol levels stayed high. That proves they've given up. They know no one's coming. That is quite the generalization. Let's dive into the study she and many refer to and its limitations. There was no baseline cortisol level, so we don't even know if cortisol was high or just normal for this experience. Tiny sample, only 10 babies of the 25 finished the study. No control group, so we can't even blame sleep training for the changes. Follow up, a grand total of three days. Even their own data tells a different story. Baby stopped crying by day three. Hello, successful sleep training, they stopped crying. Cortisol levels didn't spike after falling asleep. And moms actually had lower cortisol, AKA less stress because maybe they were sleeping. Yet somehow this was spun into proof that babies were emotionally broken. Here's what stronger science shows. The Gratisar et al. study in 2016, a randomized control trial measured infant cortisol before and after sleep training. No increase in cortisol, in fact, a slight decrease, no harm to attachment or emotional development at 12 months, better sleep for babies and less parental stress, very important, full year follow-up, not just three days. Was this study perfect? Not completely. The sample was modest, 43 babies, but here's the critical point. They looked at secure attachment. Babies who were sleep trained were just as securely attached to their parents a year later as those who weren't. That's the ultimate test. If babies had truly given up due to cortisol levels coursing through their veins in a high stress state, we would expect to see detachment, insecurity, emotional withdrawal later on, but they didn't. Because here's the truth. Cortisol rises anytime we face something hard or new. It's not necessarily a neon sign for trauma. And sleep training is new to a baby. Now let's be real, deciding whether or not to sleep train and whether to use a method that involves crying, that's a personal choice. But it is important to know the data and where there are limitations and flaws. Because the cortisol fear narrative is just that, fear, not fact. Choosing to sleep train doesn't mean breaking trust, harming attachment, or abandoning your baby. It means making a decision based on your family's needs, not internet fear. You are the expert on your child and making thoughtful, loving decisions, whatever you choose, is the very definition of good parenting. Want to learn more about cortisol and sleep training? Listen to my podcast episode, Cry Babies, Cortisol Research and Secure Attachment, and see the caption for more.